Hello everyone and welcome back to some rapid action on leeches. It's a nice Sunday, so I thought why not give it a go. Uh, and yesterday we lost the game to a, to a fairly higher rated opponent. He was some 2400 something and he outplayed us, but we did have chances in that game, only we did not take advantage of them. So this one, uh, I will again try to play good moves. I will try to play them faster than in the previous games. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Let's uh, create a game here, 10 minutes per player. And uh, let's uh, see if we can do better in this one. Uh, hopefully you you will get some use out of this and it will help you improve your own games. Uh, I still didn't, I ho hope I don't get the black piece because I still didn't uh, do a, a proper course on the Trompovsky. He really surprised me with a Trompovsky in the previous game. Uh, so ho hopefully we don't, uh, we don't get that. Uh, but yeah, let's see uh, who our opponent is for this one. Uh, let's turn off Zen mode. It is uh, Marek, Marek Z from Antarctica. Uh, doubtful, but you never know. Uh, and he goes for the immediate the G6. All right, we're going to play it uh, fairly standard, the D4. Uh, we're going to grab the full center, and uh, we're going to see what kind of a setup uh, is he going for. We're going to go for F4 right away, uh, just to make it uh, a little bit uh, interesting. All right, so he goes for uh, he goes for uh, attacking my center, and we're going to defend it with uh, with what? Let's advance the pawn. Okay, let's see let's see what he had in mind. Uh, I will fully allow him to develop uh, whatever he wants. All right, so he captures. We're gonna capture with the queen. And then if he goes knight c6, we're gonna pin the pin the knight. So uh, we also get some developing moves in. And uh, yeah, okay, a nice check. We can simply block and uh, defend our bishop. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, but he does have his dark square bishop, and this diagonal has been opened up. So once we castle, we're also going to have to play king h1 fairly fairly quickly. You never know. For the moment, the bishop is in g7, but that uh, that can change uh, easily. And uh, I do like my queen. Okay, so he goes here. He wants to attack my queen further, which I don't mind. Okay, it's... Uh, it's a nice, uh, nice idea. Uh, so do we go for do we go for knight c3 to pressure the pawn? He goes e6. Do we go for that? What is a good way to to handle things here? Yeah, we're gonna go knight to c3. We're gonna. Okay, this is this is fine. I don't mind that. Uh, he, he's gonna have to play e6, just so he doesn't get the bishop into the game. Uh, so later on, he will have to figure out how to get the bishop into the game. And while knight to f5 is very nice, uh, we can always kick it away with, with the g4. I'm considering maybe even a queenside castles here. Yeah, the knight coming here is nice, but uh, I don't think it's like too nice. But how to develop the bishop? That's the real question here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to give up my bishop. That's uh, that's for sure. How to go about this? Let's play b3, but that really weakens the knight here. So we don't want to do that. Huh, huh, huh. No, I think kingside castles it is for this one. Kingside castles it is here. Yeah, he's gonna play knight here. We're just gonna move the knight, uh, and then even if he delivers some sort of a check, we do have the uh, d3 square covered by our queen and bishop, so he can't really force anything here. Okay, so he just uh, goes to safety. Now we kind of have to figure out: do we want to trade here? Uh, I'm kind of not against trading, but uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do it uh, sort of preemptively. Yeah, I mean, bishop pair is a bishop pair. Yeah, as long as it's in the game, it's uh, it's useful to have it. And now we get out of any knight jumps. We don't have to worry about knight captures. Uh, yeah, for those of you who are new to chess, whenever you're pinning something like this in your opponent castles, don't forget that uh, the uh, knight captures queen becomes a possibility. You know, it, it does happen, even at this level. All right, so next we're gonna, if he goes queen b6, yeah, that's not really an issue. He, he will probably just slowly develop with bishop b7 or a6, b5, and b4. So, yeah, it's a, it's a position. I, I think uh, I think this could be even a 0-0 position. 
Okay, the knight here. It, it's a it's a fine square for the knight. Like it always has. It, it always has f five. Later on, since it's a closed center, I can uh, kick it away with, with the g four. So he's gonna wait for me to decide how to uh, how to uh, set up everything, and then he will decide whether he's gonna go to, to f five or not. But uh, since it's the only square for the knight, it, the knight is coming to f five. Make no mistake there. Yeah, and I have to figure out how to develop. If he doesn't play it right away. Then I can even go bishop e3 and sort of harass the rook here with my double, uh, with my bishop pair. Uh, so those are some things. d4, yeah, okay, you can play that, but uh, uh, giving up d4 squared to my knight, uh, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's very impressive. Okay, so now he's um, he's offering me this capture, which might be interesting because then I have knight a4 to c5. And there's really not uh, not a clear way of how to stop that. Yeah, we're gonna. No, I still don't want to take. Yeah, but if I push here, b5 can be played, and if bishop to b3, yeah, he can be a little bit annoying. But no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna capture for capture's sake. But yeah. I, I can't uh, uh, I can't forget about King to H1. I have to play it at some point because it does make it a bit uh, difficult to to develop. But yeah, okay, it's a uh, it's a nice position. It's a nice position. I like his position. I like my position. Okay, we're just gonna put the bishop on B3. Um, since the knight re has no real purpose on C3, it doesn't really do all that much. Like it does pressure the center. That's true. Um, now knight f5, nah, bishop to b7 can be played, although I don't see, I don't see a scenario where this pawn touches d4, unless, unless he plays it, like, right away, but I don't think that's gonna happen, because imagine this knight on d6, that's an absolute monster, so d4 is not an option. So maybe kicking it away with b4 first, yeah, okay, can be played, but uh, I actually like the, <laughs> the knight on a4. Um, and then d4 maybe? No, he's gonna go for knight to b4. With, uh, with what idea? What's the idea here? If I go, if I go queen d4, he's just gonna move it back? Yeah? All right, let's repeat once. I'm gonna play queen d4. But no, he, he wants to play maybe, nah, it's nothing. Yeah, he'll probably just move it back and then I'm gonna play queen d3. And if he repeats once again, uh, then, okay, no, he just wants that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, let's play a3, since a3 is very useful for us. He's gonna attack the queen again. And uh, yeah, we're, we're actually very happy on d3. We're actually very happy on d3. The bishop here, yeah, it's uh, it's a nice piece. Also, uh, the defense c2. And now he could go after the bishop, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe yeah, maybe knight a5 attacks the bishop and then he lands it on c4. So it, it could be that if he he attacks it, I can just leave it there uh, because capturing uh, c captures. No, he's gonna develop first. Okay. Uh, makes sense, uh, and uh, now we're now we're bringing the the bishop to f4. Sorry, to e3, gaining more control over the d4 square. Uh, if he goes after it with knight to f5, we can put it on f2 before kicking away the knight with the g4. And uh, yeah, okay, d4 now might be a move because knight captures and then rook here, but also knight captures attacks the queen, so it's really not. Yeah, he wants to put pressure on the C file. Okay, let's just... Uh... Hmm. Yeah, very nice. Let's go rook d1. Let's go rook d1. Yeah, this d4 pawn push might be an issue at some point. Okay, so he does go for this. Um, 
which uh, yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Uh, but we're just gonna force the capture. Yeah, we're just gonna force the capture. We're just gonna force the capture. And this game we're even doing okay on time. Yeah, but it's only like the, the first half of the first half of the game. We're still uh, messing around with the middle game. And now if he goes uh knight c4. Yeah, it's a it's a nasty piece to to have on c4. I might even have to capture it, but I might even have to capture, but then I'm gonna remaneuver my bishop. Yeah, okay. So he does it. Um he goes after the b2 pawn. Uh we're gonna capture. Which does improve his center a little bit. But not a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing B captures uh, opening up the center. I, I don't think it makes any sense for him. Like Queen D7 is just uh, Queen D7 is just very nice. <sighs> yeah, and if we can if we can shift the bishop to B4 and land on D6, could be very annoying for him. Uh, yeah, Knight to F5 uh, doesn't have all that many great squares, so we're just gonna kick it away, like we said. So, yeah, we'll see what it does. We'll see what it does. It's interesting. He might also play rook. Uh, he, yeah, he might just also play rook captures. No, he goes with the B pawn. Yeah, makes sense. So now, uh, now we're going to play queen to e3, simply to keep control over this diagonal and also, uh, also free up the d4 square for our knight. Yeah, if knight here, again, it's the same thing. Queen f2 followed by g4. So we're not worried about that. And we do have sufficient control over this diagonal. Uh, we still haven't played king to h1. I know it's a, it's a crime against chess, but uh, I just never had the time. He, he continues to, to pressure. Uh, yeah, and we also have to figure out uh, if we get sort of a, a breeding move in. Do we have something like knight a4? Maybe, maybe, maybe really gaining control over this c5 square. Or do we keep the knight here? He goes after, okay. Fine. <clears throat> okay, so he stops g4. Um, yeah, if I play h3, he's just gonna play h5. So we have to do it like like Tal taught us. Uh, play g3 first, then you play h3, and only then you execute the g4. That's how the great Misha said it should be done. I I once uh, saw a game he played in the in the Benoni, and then he said like, don't play a6 b5. You have to play b6 a6 and b5. Otherwise, your opponent will just blockade the position with a4 a5. And it's uh you know something that uh, you can maybe use in every game you play like uh it's not the, the exact same position but it just you know give, gives you an idea <clears throat> okay so we're uh much better on time so our opponent uh at some point will have to do something uh as the okay so what's bishop here he wants to go after my bishop but this also allows uh yeah so we're just uh we're just gonna yeah, uh, rook b8 sort of does pressure the b2 pawn, but we we have an in-between bishop c5, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, g4 is coming. Yeah, now rook b8 here, and then g4. Okay. Uh, oh, he wants to play this? Really? Okay. It's fair. I don't mind. The knight goes back, attacks the pawn. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually not bad. <clears throat> that's actually not bad. have to play this 
at least for the moment. Yeah, d4. Uh, at this point, with two minutes on the clock, I would just give up the d4 pawn to open up this diagonal. Since uh, without uh, having that as counterplay, I don't see uh, a way for him to, to actually do all that much. Yeah, we're going to play this. Just uh, keep control over the bishop. Wow. Wow, I actually blundered a full bishop here. A full knight. Yeah. Yeah, that's very sad. I have no idea why I thought I had this. I have no idea why I thought I had this. Okay, now it's... Uh, I should just resign here. Yeah, I think up until this point we were we were perfectly fine, but uh, yeah, now that uh, now that he played this and I I I probably didn't have the knight a4 move because I always thought yeah I have a4 uh, doesn't really matter what happens. Yeah, do we still have any counterplay here? That's the that's the question. Doesn't appear so. Yeah, okay, so he goes here. Yeah, let's go here. Still has a minute on the clock, so I'm going to try and punish him for, for taking so much time to find the moves. But it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I can't really, can't really play any sort of a breakthrough here. Yeah, okay, so he goes for that. Uh, we're going to play rook e1, followed by rook e3. Just trying to make something out of the position. Okay, so he goes back. He has to figure out a way how to actually put pressure. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, a check on the light squares isn't all that impressive. Yeah, so he wants to trade. As he should. Yeah, we're going to trade and go rook here. Go back with the knight. Okay, now once the knight lands on g6, now we can actually go for some mating ideas here. Yeah, he does have one check, it's not much. Okay, so he wants to trade queens and he successfully finds it. Yeah, we have to trade here. Do we? Yeah, we have to trade, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we have to trade. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go after the after the king here. <sighs> Just king e7, yeah, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing here, nothing at all. Can we still make it interesting at least? Okay. He's giving up the knight here. It's very interesting. Obviously, we want to deliver checkmate, which he will not allow. So let's go here. Let's go. Can we take a pawn? We can take a pawn. Let's go after another pawn. He has eight seconds, so I think we can actually just play this and still win. Uh, there we go. No, he finds it. He finds it. Tricky, tricky stuff.
There we go. All right. Uh, I had to I had to punish him as he spent too much time uh, after you know for, for the game. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but uh, yeah, I've lost way too many games on time. So let's uh, let's see what what we did here. Uh, it's uh, okay. Uh, you you will blunder. I will blunder. Everyone blunders. That's not the point. Point is to you know uh, recollect and uh, continue playing solid moves. Uh, or at least moves that will allow you to win the game. Yeah, I play d5. Okay. Uh, yeah, even d captures on c5. So yeah, those are, these are um, the moves that uh, you, you always should play. Like I've mentioned in my previous video, like Fabio always plays such such a move. Uh, but uh, you know, I thought it's some some line. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Yeah, this is perfectly fine. Uh, I'm just interested in the general game game plan. Okay, so obviously you should capture here with some knight a4. Yeah, okay, we did discuss this sort of gaining control over the dark squares. I uh, I prefer to keep the tension with the bishop pair, maybe allowing him a bit too much. Yeah, a3, we just go back. <clears throat> okay, bishop e3. Yeah, it's still 0-0 zero, zero territory. And now, okay, capturing the, the bishop is the way to go. I thought this would be nicely... Like what? Captures, captures, and b4. Okay, and now I can either triple my pawns or go here. Yeah, and then he goes bishop c6. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Yeah. And now bishop b5. Okay. Okay. So that's the the fault with the with the tactics here. But he captured here. Uh, yeah. We we sort of had everything under control. G3. No h3. Really h3. And never worry about g4, yeah. Okay, I guess the idea is that if queen and knight are covering h4, that they have to remain here for forever. Uh, I went for this, which is still fine. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with this. I played knight h2, yeah. And see now, uh, this is where I blunder. Yeah, here in this crucial position, bishop d4 sort of gives me a plus 1.5. Uh, I blundered the knight here, and now, okay, uh, analyzing this is uh, really a mo moot point. Uh, but I did uh, manage to, to sort of uh, get a tricky position, and he got scared as he was getting girl on time. I threatened checkmate here. He defended with the bishop, and uh, yeah, here was the uh, where he resigned. Uh, of course, the position is completely winning for him, but yeah, to 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 a little time on the clock. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, everything up until the point I blundered is uh, sort of valuable advice. There were, of course, better moves, as there always are. But, you know, the, the th it's, it's the thought behind the moves uh, that counts. And if you use it in your own games without blundering, you will achieve greatness, of course. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.